Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're hearing this now, there's a good chance you've already seen it, but I wanted to use the time to plug my Twitch stream. As of right now, I'm streaming every Monday through Thursday from 10am to 2pm EST, and I do digital tracings, gaming, and many more things to come. This video is my reaction to Ludwig's video, titled Ludwig's 3 Tips for Streaming. I think Ludwig's video is excellent, and even if you don't watch his content specifically, I think he provides a lot of great insights into the potential avenues and pitfalls on the way to having a successful streaming career. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you all have a great day. Alright. I'm back. Let us, uh, let's continue this, shall we? Let's start this, I guess it would be. This will be interesting. Doing that. So that's what I did! And we're gonna take a look at it here today. All the knowledge I have rolled up into one PowerPoint presentation, and the PowerPoint presentation is called How to Make It Big as a Streamer. That is the entire goal of all this, is making it big as a streamer. You know, because it's not that fun to stream and not have viewers or not make money from it. So, I get it. I get it. A lot of people want this job, and, and this is the start. Why listen to me? Uh, that's a fair question. Well, I'll tell you why. Growth. I'm now the 42nd biggest streamer on Twitch.tv. <laughs> not flexing. Just stating facts. This is my chart line from quarter one of 2019 up until December of last year. And let me tell you, January, even better. Now, hey. I'm not the biggest, I'm not the brightest, I'm not the first, and I won't be the last. But I'm just a guy telling you what I've learned in my two and a half years, almost three, of being a streamer. So stick around, you might learn something. And while you're here, subscribe. Hey, it only takes a few seconds. You know, sometimes the YouTube algorithm will unsubscribe you. Maybe double check, turn it from red to gray. I'd appreciate it. And let's get on with the show. With the first and most important part, do you want to be a streamer? That's it. That's how it starts. This is it. Now, maybe on the surface level, you'll be thinking, well, yeah. Yeah, I want to be a streamer. Are you kidding me? I play video game, make millions of dollars, work on own hours? What? Yes, I want to be a streamer. Well, think about it a little bit deeper. Don't just think, do you want? Think, why do you want? What do you want out of it? Let's just do a quick poll in chat. How many people want to be streamers? So it's like most people in this chat like the idea of being a streamer. All right, every single person who said yes, whether you said it to yourself or you voted, whatever it is, you need to do this right now. Write this down. This is not a joke. I'm being very serious. I want you to write this down. I know it's a bit corny. All right, try to do it on pen and paper. If you don't have it, you can do it on your phone notes and take a screenshot, but really actually do this. Write this down, three things. First of all, if you wanna be a streamer, when are you gonna start? Set a hard start date when you're actually going to start. If you've already started, maybe this is the date that you're gonna start your YouTube or uh, start a new series or whatever it is. Just write some date where you're going to start achieving something you've been saying you're gonna do. Number two. Write your goals for one year out. This can be for the start of 2022, maybe one exact year, maybe a few months. It doesn't really matter. All you need to do is have a set period of time and goals you would like to achieve by the end of that set period of time. Now, look, this is not your end goals. If you want to be the biggest streamer in the world, you don't have to write, I want to be the biggest streamer in the world by 2022. It's not really realistic. But you can write goals on the way to your final goal. And it's okay if you don't have everything figured out, at least write something down that you would like to do. And hey, this doesn't have to be numbers. Like streaming doesn't necessarily imply you need to be a big streamer. Maybe your goal is just to make a community that you really like being a part of. Maybe it's just to record all of your Rocket League gameplay, in which case it's very easy to achieve your goals. Success isn't based on how big of a streamer you are. It's based off the goals you set and your ability to achieve them in a certain time frame, all right? That's what I think at least, that's how I've done things, and that's what I'm uh, telling you to do. It's my advice to you. And then the final thing to write down, three to five creators you want to emulate. Not necessarily that you like, because maybe you like Shroud, but you don't frag like Shroud frags. So write someone that you like that you think you could emulate. Here's an example of mine. I've done this. 
I know I'm being a bit corny, but this really happened. I did this in 2018. I wrote down all my goals. I didn't actually just do it for stream. I did it at New Year's. I did it for uh, many different things in life, but these are my stream ones. I wanted to hit 2,000 subs, 100,000 followers, 1 million unique viewers. I wanted to be punctual, and I wanted to go full-time. And I went four for five. Four for five is pretty good. That is pretty good. Four for five will take 80%. That's a B minus. That's a 3.0, almost 2.667. Still pretty close. Still pretty close. At the end of the day, I was able to set goals and then hit them. I hit these goals by the end of 2018, and then I was able to keep going. Part of the reason you do this is because, hey, it's very obvious that streaming's not for everyone. It's also obvious that it's better to take a shot on something than to never try it and regret that. But how do you know how long to do it or what to do? Well, this, is, this does that all for you. If you write down your goals and you set a time frame to hit the goals in, then at the end of the, the period, right, at the end of next year, 2022, you can reflect. You can be like, hey, I went 0 for 5. My goal is to hit 100 average viewers, and I'm at 15. Maybe I am not cut out for being a big streamer. And that's an honest conversation you can have with yourself, but only if you do the work now to set goals, to set a time frame, to understand it, rather than just kind of nine to five grind. I just go live. I'm just doing my thing. I've been doing this since 2018. That's all shit. All right. At least set yourself some sort of time frame so you have some sort of growth and progression that you can accurately and objectively look back on. I've also put the five streamers that I liked and thought I could emulate. Uh, CD in the third, I think he was one of the best streamers, still is, uh, in terms of integrating music. If you've ever thought, like, damn, Ludwig uses music well on stream, that's because CD in the third. Nick Merckx. Nick Merckx, uh, he's great with his community, uh, and he added stakes to every single Fortnite game. He taught me a bit about stakes. He taught me a lot about community. Soda, I've always thought, was, like, the GOAT streamer. I thought he was, like, the best streamer. I know nowadays he just does whatever the fuck he wants, but I thought through and through, in terms of like, if you were to look at any streamer, I still think Soda Poppin probably the go. Clint, I thought his YouTube was some of the best shit. Uh, he was able to turn just random streams into really good YouTube videos, and uh, and he was very personable. But you know, obviously I can't emulate Clint to a T. He has this ability that every single fucking human on earth just loves Clint Stevens no matter what. I don't have that. You can think I have that. I promise you I don't have that. And then finally, Mango. Mango, a man who has maybe 1,000 viewers, 2,000 viewers, but 10,000 subs. If you sub to him, unsub, and then resub three months later, this is true, Mango will remember, and he'll call it out. He'll be like, oh, uh, Pirate Oliver. Hey, uh, you're a resub. Aren't you used to sub like three months ago? And so his ability to remember made people, and he has this superpower, I truly believe, to make people feel so included which sometimes involves making people feel very excluded so that everyone else feels included. But that's besides the point. Uh, that's my five. Done. Like I said, I did start this beforehand, but I actually, when I watched this video through the first time, I really did stop and write this stuff down. And you just saw me stop and write stuff down. Like, edit this as I go. If you didn't write anything down, but you want to be a streamer, this is the number one best thing you can do. The absolute only lesson to take away from today if you want to bake it big on Twitch. Quit. <laughs> Fucking quit right now. That is my advice to you. Yeah. If you didn't even take the one to two minutes to write something down from a man who is a top 100 streamer who knows a thing or two, who knows a thing or two, then I promise you, you will not make it through zero one viewer streams for five, six hours at a time. It's going to be miserable. You're going to hate it. It's not going to be fun. And True. you're not going to achieve your goals if you didn't even write them down in the first place. And this is not trying to be mean, but let's just take a guess. Chat, I want you to guess Right now, tell me the number of people who streamed last month. 50,000, sure. 650,000, wow. 5 million, okay, sure. Big range, it is 6.9 million. Nice. 6.9 million unique streamers every month. Streaming is not as it was in 2013. It is very well known, it is very mainstream, and it is very competitive. If you want it to become the best employee at Walmart, the largest 
company in the world in terms of numbers of employees. You'd have to beat out 2.2 million people. That's just the numbers. That's just the facts. You'd have to be better bagger. You'd have to be a better stalker. You'd have to be better at accounting uh, uh, than 2.2 million Walmart employees. Then you'd be the best in the world. It is three times harder to do that on Twitch. And look, I know that some of these streams might only do it once and whatever, but at least you can try to gauge the numbers. Just for even more reference, there are 45,400 partners. Those are people oh. who I would say have made it. And made it is loose because to be a partner, to apply, you only need 75 average viewers, uh, which, you know, it's a good amount. Uh, and there's weird things that they do. That and they 75 people seven, watching and, like, at talking day, at the same time. 0.66% of people pretty cool, actually. make it here on Twitch. And so I had 20,000 people like my tweet on Twitter. And so mathematically, about 120, 150 people will make it. The other 21,000 XXX, peace, GG. It's just a fact. It is just a numbers game. And look, don't let that be too daunting to you because there are some pros. First of all, you make your own hours when you stream, and that's a good thing. That's really hype. You're your own boss. This, just for some reference, is how many hours I work. It's not insane. It's not as many as someone. So while I did watch this part, um, like through this part the first time I watched it, if I were to you know, do my goal of four days a week for four hours uh, per month. That's, it's not that much. It's, it's humble beginnings and it's, you know, just getting used to it. Um, but I, I think just in my mind, the, the more engaging my streams are, the more people actually watch and I get to interact with, the more fun they'll be over time. So if I do four hours a day times four days a week, it's 16 hours a week times four, it's, it's only 64 hours, right? People do 80 hour weeks. So, you know, I'm really starting off small. I'll have to think about that more. If I were to do it four hours a day times five days a week, times four weeks, that's 80 hours. A week. You know, people do 80 hour weeks and that's... Wait, am I dumb? So if they do eight hours a day times five days a week, that's 40. Okay, 80 hour weeks is a lot. I, I misspoke. But I think that if... Uh, I think this four days a week, like, as I try to, like... Just get used to being in front of the camera, get used to streaming, just, you know, develop a constant flow of content. Um, and then the more people who jump into the stream, I will have more of a incentive to be continue streaming as that ramps up. But doing 171 hours is crazy. Like, if you did 171 hours, and let's say you streamed, let's say you streamed 30 days. That's almost six hours a day. That's pretty, that's pretty insane. And I assume you'd want some days off, but I don't know. That That's still a lot. Who's like a doctor or whatever, but I streamed this many hours, November, December, January, past three months. And uh, I spent about 25 hours a month on YouTube. That's one, making thumbnails and titles, but mostly actually just looking at what works and uh, trying to re-emulate that success. Uh, and then like 20 hours on business, whether it's like calls for sponsors uh, or like when I do a stream on chess.com uh, or whatever it is, uh, I spend, a, I would say, roughly 200 plus hours a month. And then there's also the aspect that I'm always on. You know what I mean? Like I have to have my phone and my Twitter notifications ready in case something big happens, whether Corpse tweeted at me or they need an Among Us player. You know what I mean? Like, I just have to be available. I can never necessarily be off, but I'm about 200 plus hours a month. You don't have to be available. Sure, I don't necessarily have to have to, but I would lose out on growth if I'm not. And I think that part of the reason that I'm successful is because I am available. And you'll see people like Carl Jacobs, who's blown up. Doesn't matter if you like him or hate him. Carl Jacobs is blown up on Twitter and Twitch and every platform. And Carl has post notifications for every big YouTuber. So if they tweet, he sees it, he replies. People see him in the replies all the time. You'll see Carl on your timeline. Very I interesting. guarantee it. And it's because Carl is never off. He's always Networking off. is so yeah, important. Yeah, maybe that's only an hour of Carl's day. Like from what I gathered Twitter, in my corporate life and now from what Ludwig talks about in more of five his, in the streamer life, it's so, it's so important. You know what I mean? This is just some, something to keep in mind. But you can make a lot of money. And this is how much streamers make. This is rough. I, I don't think we're allowed to say specific numbers. Uh, it goes against a contract. But 
roughly, if you average 100 viewers, I think you can expect to make about 1,500 on stream. Uh, honestly, if you're a smaller streamer, the amount of money you will make will be higher uh, because people like supporting smaller streamers, so you'll have more whales. Um, it's kind of like a bell curve where people really like giving money to smaller streamers. And then middling streamers, like 1,000 to 5,000, not so much. And then big streamers, they go back to being whales and stuff. But, uh, but this is per month. This is monthly. I would say you make about 2,000 a month if you average 100 viewers. Uh, if you ever uh, average 1,000, then you start making pretty good money. Honestly, I put negative here. I think you'd be losing money on YouTube at this point. You probably wouldn't be getting enough views. And then you're paying your editor. Please pay your editors, by the way. Okay? I don't care how much you love Bernie Sanders. You got to pay them. No offense. So you got to pay your editors. So you're probably losing money oh. on YouTube. We'll get into that in a bit. You should still be doing YouTube. Uh, if you start getting to like a thousand viewers, then you start making pretty good money. And bear in mind, this is before tax and you be taxed a little bit more than a normal job um, as a contractor. But regardless, you still make pretty good money and you have the upside to make a lot of money. Now, this 10,000 viewer number is obviously varies wildly, but I even looked at a streamer like tens. That's actually where I pulled this tens. He has like 5,000 subs. He has a contract with an esports org. He has a thriving YouTube channel. Like, he is making a lot of money. There's definitely the ability to be a millionaire if you make it to the top. I will say, though, I will say, and this is important. Let me switch over for just a moment. If you're wondering, because we talked about making it is 0.66%. Let's just talk about making to that 10,000 viewer mark. You might be thinking and seeing millions in the eyes, which is great. I mean, sure, dream big, think big, whatever. But let's talk about stands. I do a lot of streams of stands. Stands averaged 400 viewers this past month. Stands has about 700 subs. Stands is the top 0.06% of Twitch. Think about that. You don't think of Stands as a big streamer, but in reality, he is top 5,000 of 6.9 million. This is truly impressive if you get here. Truly. And I mean that. That is a big deal. And it is very hard to do, but this is more realistically your upside when you start streaming rather than a channel like mine or, or a channel like XQC's. I know I told you to write down your goals and dream big, but also just understand the math and the numbers. Stans is a top 0.06%. He's the top like 10% of the top 0.6% <laughs> and that's all the partners. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. He's the top 10% of Humble all your uh, partner streamers. And, uh, and that is a realistic goal to have. You should at this point uh, have found out whether if you wrote things down, you are even cut out for step two or not. But if you did write things down and you did actually do what I told you to do, anyone can take advice from the second part. How do you stream? Uh, I just want to say that this is the part that I haven't seen yet. This is the part. We're in uncharted waters for me. I'm going into this uh, for the first time. With yeah. You already figured out that you do want to be a streamer why you want to be a streamer, what your goals are as a streamer, how do you do it? How do you stream? Well, this is... Here we go. Wait, why did that go to B? Ah, what a disaster. Stream. This is my one advice, my biggest advice. Streams are recordings. That's what it is in 2021. That is the best way you can think about a Twitch stream. Why? Well, let's think about a YouTube video. YouTube videos have some pros that normal streams, conventional streams don't. YouTube videos have built-in growth mechanics, all right? Okay. The algorithm. A YouTube video can pop off. A stream can't really pop off, you know? Like, you can go live and I, tomorrow, can buy a first edition booster box from Pokemon that cost me 400000 and I can go live on a brand new channel and no one will see it. Literally no one. Mm. Because there is no way for you to know that that is happening. And nobody is digging through the 5,000 zero viewer Andes, one viewer Andes on the just chatting section. So that's why Twitch fails in that aspect. YouTube doesn't. Also, YouTube is permanent. You upload a VOD on YouTube, a video it stays there. Twitch, it's live and then the VODs are up for 60 days and then they get deleted and... Let's be real, even if they didn't get deleted, nobody goes through to find VODs. Not really, it doesn't really happen. It's just a fact that VODs are absolutely terrible on Twitch and I don't see that changing. And so the permanence of a YouTube video means that even if it doesn't do well in the first month, maybe a month or two from now, you'll be able to look back and be like, oh, this video actually did well. You can't really do that with streams. For example, I did a stream the other day, I did the higher lower stream and it did okay. I had an okay number of viewers on Twitch. I had like 22K. 
but it didn't do that great. But my YouTube video has right now 560,000 views, which is 100,000 above average. The fact that it's permanent on YouTube lets me see that. If I only had Twitch, I would be like, oh, if I play higher or lower on stream, it's only okay content. No, it's better than okay. It's just that people didn't know it was happening or weren't live uh, to watch or busy, whatever. It's harder to get viewers on Twitch in the moment, and it's bad to gauge success off of your live viewer count when it can be influenced by so many variables and be so, so Dogecoin-esque, if I can. Next, uh, structured format is better content. This is general advice, but generally, YouTube videos are structured. I think we kind of know that. You know how a YouTube video generally goes. Yo, what's up, YouTube? Back here with another... You know the vibe. Twitch streams don't have structure inherently built in, which usually makes them a bit worse. Structure just allows you to have a very concise beginning, middle, end. And a very concise beginning, middle, end is usually better than just a hodgepodge of whatever the hell you're doing while live. And then finally, every YouTube video is a lottery ticket. Like I said earlier, if you upload a YouTube video, it has a chance to pop off. It really does. If you go live, you're never really going to have that chance to blow up off of a stream. Mm. The only people I can think Understood. of that blew up off of a stream either were like collabing with somebody really big uh, or came from a platform with a lot of viewers. Uh, nobody just blew up out of nowhere overnight on Twitch. Okay. YouTube can happen overnight. I mean, literally overnight, you can blow up. And you've seen that time and time again. Dream literally was like a 10K Andy on YouTube at the start of 2020. He's doing pretty well. That would not happen if you only streamed. Admittedly, this whole thing was about how to stream, and we've only talked about YouTube videos. That's because it's time to start formatting your streams around your YouTube videos. So you have to stream for YouTube. Now, when I go live, I'll have segments, and that's how I think of it. I'll have segments for YouTube, and I'll stream those segments, and then I'll have like filler time in between, and then I'll have some things that aren't for YouTube. And that's fine, but you need to have some segments. Very roughly, they work like this. They'll have a uh, introduction, an introduction to the idea to what the segment is while you're streaming. I'm going to give you an example of a YouTuber doing this because I think that this is probably the single best YouTuber and they get a credit for a lot of other things, but they don't get a lot of credit for this at introductions. And that's, of course, In Mr. Beast. Video. Mr. Beast, I think, is the best YouTuber at doing introductions. And even though we're talking about streaming, I take away and you also can take away how to do these intros on Twitch. Let's just take a look. At I don't really watch any Mr. Beast videos. I probably should, though, just because... I mean, the scale of what he does is already incredible, and I know that even as someone who doesn't watch him. But the fact that it's the scale and, you know, he's maintaining popularity. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's even growing, right? I mean, at the very least, he's still getting deals. Like, he's got to be doing something right in terms of the longevity of his uh, videos and career and everything. Look at this. In this video, we are going to be eating $100,000 golden ice cream. I'm blown away. It's a good topic sentence right off the bat. This is so good. Five thousand dollar mac and cheese. This mac and cheese is magnificent. Thirty thousand dollar banana foster. Oh, that's incredible. And so much more. Starting off with one hundred dollar ice cream and working our way up. That was nineteen seconds, top to bottom. And what did the introduction do? Let's talk about it. Let's break it down. It introduced the idea, the concept, what they're doing in the stream. All right. So explained it. If you're going to be watching, what's happening? Two. It introduced stakes. Stakes are an integral idea into every stream. You need stakes in whatever you do. It just makes it better. Stakes can be very small. It doesn't have to be the uh, amount of money. That's the stakes for this one. All right. So the idea is we're going to be eating expensive foods. The stakes are that every food will increase in price. And then it also says how this will end. How does this whole journey come to a close? Well, it comes to a close when we eat $100,000 ice cream. That is how it closes. So then the video, mm. you can expect that they'll start eating foods. The stakes increase. All right, there's more and more and more and more expensive things. It ends when they eat that ice cream. That's the entire thing. You can do the same thing on Twitch, and we do it all the time here on this channel. For example, we just did unbanned form speedruns. Okay, introduce the idea. We're doing unbanned forms, but we're speedrunning it. Okay, that's the concept. What are the stakes? Well, the stakes are we want a good time. We want to try to get world record. This costs no money, but those are the stakes trying to get a good time. When do we get to the conclusion? 
when we beat the time and get the world record. Very simple, all right? And the meat and potatoes are me just doing the runs. Introduction says everything that's gonna happen. Conclusion is when I finally got the world record. Very easy, very straightforward. You don't necessarily need money, but you can create streams in segments that have all three of these aspects. And when you stream for YouTube, the beautiful thing about it is your stream is better, but also you get a YouTube video that is very easy to edit. You can just edit down because everything's built in and you get to trim out all the fat until you have just this beautiful lean YouTube video that is the 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is of gold of the 30 minute hour recording. So it's just- That's really smart. I really like that a lot. It's like, it's like in college when I used to write essays and in high school, I wanted to make the papers longer and longer and longer. But when I got to college, uh, there was a hard pivot where the professors were like, you don't need to say all this. You should really just be getting to your point. And the criticism pivoted from in high school where it was like more and more and more content to college where it's quality over quantity. So that, that makes a lot of sense. It's a win, win, win. There's no losing here. And don't get me wrong. It is still fine to go live and do regular streams. I actually had a problem when I first started streaming where I would only do segments. I was like, if it's not a segment, it does worse on viewership. There's no point. I just need to do segments. Well, you can do both. And I've learned that. That's something I had to learn and I had to deal with things like numbers going down and viewership being bad. And that's that's something that takes a bit of time. That's like a personal journey. You just have to one day get over it. There's nothing I can tell you. You just have to one day get over it. But I've learned that I can do segments, plan out segments, and then do like, just I'll call it filler content. Think of XQC streams. Most of his content is like, it's not really formed around YouTube videos. It's mostly just filler content. And it's, it's, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's a bad way to stream. It's kind of fun in a way because he's always like thing to thing to thing. There's no dead air. It's like chess, bang, done chess, react, bang, react, done react, bang. We're playing Super Mario now, bang, done that, Valorant time. And none of these are really going to be like really phenomenal YouTube videos. He streams like old streamers used to stream. I just don't think that'll work for people anymore because it's not 2013. The competition's too fierce. Your stream's probably not going to get found. You're probably not better than the good gamers at games. Probably not funnier than the funniest people at being funny. And even if you are, you have to be not as funny as Moon Moon. You have to be funnier than Moon Moon to get found because people already know who Moon Moon is. So It's a high bar to clear. Also, he's, he's really right about this stuff. You got to work smarter, not harder. But rather than stream like XQC streams, stream for YouTube. And you can do both, but just remember to include segments. Just promise me you will not do the grinding, hustling, nine to five, putting in my eight hours. Cause that is all bullshit and a waste of your fucking time. You are literally doing nothing. It is not just going live that matters. It doesn't. Next, this is just one quick example. Which is a better video? Example of two streams. Now, no shots. Blouse Toys actually had more viewers here. This is Blouse Toys' stream, ranked Valorant with friends. And then stay. Is he saying Blastoise weird? Or is it actually Blouse Toys? Chances is, is ranking favorite avatar clips. Okay. Which one probably transfers to a YouTube video better? Now we can. Uh, he's probably going to do the ranking fa uh, fave avatar clips. It's in all caps, and I, I can see like the thumbnail of the guys going like. Like, you know, stuff like that. But I don't know. There's something about that rubs me the wrong way. Ignore factors like copyright for now, just for this example. I just screenshotted two random streams I saw yesterday when I was making this slideshow. I think you guys would probably agree that Stans makes a very natural YouTube video. Blouse yep. Toys is just kind of like a Valorant highlight for a guy who is okay at Valorant. And it's a great stream, maybe he's having fun, but this will not help you grow. We can admit that. He probably won't grow unless he suddenly becomes radiant or has a lot of knowledge, or is a really funny player in Valorant that is missing. Realistically, Stans' stream will have a video that will help him grow a little more. It's also important to form ideas, and this is a, a, an interesting concept, form ideas around titles. So if you have the title of what you're gonna do, you can form the idea around it. And that's kind of like all of Small Ant's channel. So I think Small Ant is a really excellent streamer and YouTuber. But let's just take a look at his YouTube channel for a moment. All of these are just really interesting and engaging titles. I turn the floor in Mario Odyssey to lava. Pokemon Ruby, but all opponents have Wonder Guard. A Breath of the Wild YouTuber thought he was better than me. 
Can you beat Evan Tide Island without touching the ground? If you form a concept, a stream around just a title, you write your clickbait for you, you write your title for you, and the content will be very natural. It's a lot of work. He works really hard to beat all this, but it's a good way to do it. So for example, if I wanna beat Pogo Stuck upside down, I'm working with the title, I beat Pogo Stuck, but it was upside down. That's my title, that's what I'm working with, and then the content will write itself. So Small Ant, great example of that. Great example of having titles, both in streams, because he streams all of this, by the way. He streams all of this that translate to good YouTube videos. All right, let's go next. The three ways to grow, okay? Three ways to grow. We talked a bit about uh, the middle one. We're gonna go on it a little more, but let's start with collabs. Collaboration is probably one of the best ways to grow. I am not dumb. I am not oblivious to the fact that I have used Corpse, Technoblade, Sykuno, Pokimane, you name it, and it's helped me grow. I mean, that's just a Networking. fact. If you Mentioned that earlier. with people, it helps I you agree. Grow. And it Hard needs agree. to be in somewhat of an, in an authentic way. Obviously, if the content is worse when you work with someone, then it won't really go well together. But okay. collabs just help. They just, they really help. It's a thing. You can think as on the nose as when XJaws brought on Syndicate to his YouTube channel. And then Syndicate blew up into a larger YouTuber than Xtras. That's something that happened a few years ago. Uh, or you can think of it as minute as an Among Us game where Yeti makes a brilliant play. And everyone's like, who's this Yeti Apocalypse guy? Like, mm. yes, you also have to be good. You also have to have a good bedrock of content. It's not as easy as just streaming with someone. Because I promise you, I've streamed with a bunch of people in Among Us who have 15 viewers when we started and have 15 viewers now. But if you have some sort of skill, some bedrock of content that people can absorb the moment they see you and you're exposed, then you're gonna do well. Does that make sense? You need to have something there ready. So let's think of the Mr. Beast Challenge 1 video. Uh, Mr. Beast did a challenge. He shouted out the channel of a winner. The idea was um, get this person uh, 1 million subscribers. And it was a contest where you get the winner of the contest 1 million subs. And the guy who won was Zealous. Zealous is at 2 million subs. And the only reason he's there is because he had content that one was quite similar to Mr. Beast's already there as a bedrock. If Mr. Beast shouted out a channel that had never posted a video, they're not gonna go anywhere. And look no further than every time a big streamer hosts a 20 viewer Andy. You host a 20 viewer Andy, they're not ready for it, they don't have the content for it. You look back mm. a month later, still a 20 viewer Andy. I remember so vividly Shroud saying that Twitch is a lottery, raiding or hosting some random guy playing some like, it was like Dead Cell or something, I forget exactly the game. And I looked back, I looked back like a like two weeks later to see that guy's channel, same number of viewers as before the Shroud Raid. His content wasn't ready. It literally just wasn't ready. So collabs are good, but you need to have a bedrock of content to make them work. And they don't have to be with insanely large streamers. You can have a, a hole that's better than the sum of its parts when you work with other people. And that's totally fine as well. Doesn't have to be necessarily huge streamers. Also, one more note on collabs. Please don't be lazy about it. I get an email every day about someone saying, hey, can we do an interview? I have an interview where I interview big streamers. It doesn't, and maybe I'm wrong, feel like these people are all huge Larry King fans who love the art of the interview. It just feels like the easiest, most thoughtless way to interact with a large streamer so that you get some growth from it. Maybe I'm wrong, but that is the vibe that I get. And when you send an email out for that, that's all you do, it's lazy, it's not gonna work. I promise you it's not gonna do that much for you. The people who have really succeeded in collabs with larger streamers have done things, and bear in mind all streamers are lazy, that the streamers really like, enjoy, and it's so, it's so, I promise you, painlessly free to interact with streamers. And just look no further, than the Dr. Disrespect Alleyway song. That was made by a man called J plus one. And you might be asking, well, who's that guy? Well, this is the guy who took a random clip of Doc singing while playing Warzone, I believe, called Give Him Love, and then made it into a fire song. Put it on Doc's subreddit, I think he actually might have donated. And then all of a sudden, Doc loves it. And when Doc wants a song, he's like, well, I'm hitting up J plus one. Same things happen to me with XX Girlfriend, with my editor Polite, 
with with people who I played Among Us with. Think Otto. I mean, Otto, that motherfucker leached his way in, but he had something to offer of value. He actually was a godlike programmer who could make things that were valuable. I used Otto. I needed Otto for content. Otto's great. And now he has like 500 plus viewers. That's great. He didn't send me an email saying, hey, Ludwig, I make programs. He made a program for me and put it on my subreddit. So make something. Put it on the subreddit. Donate with a link, whatever it is. There's a thousand examples of this working. It can work again. That's how you collab with someone big. Or you can just collab with someone smaller and more your size. And that is also easier as well. Does that make sense? Next, outside traction. Look, I think conventionally everyone knows like, hey, you got to be posting on YouTube and TikTok and Twitter. And that's great. And that is true. That is all true. Twitch does not have really good growth mechanisms. Uh, these other sites do. You can bring viewers from those sites over to Twitch to stream or wherever you want to stream. It can also mean getting outside traction from a community. You don't just have to post to the void of YouTube and hope that some people find it. I was a part of the Super Smash Brothers Melee community in a very genuine way. It's my favorite game of all time. I made a lot of friends from it and I made content for it. And it is a lot easier, I promise you, to get noticed in a community that small when I post on their subreddit a YouTube video I made and get traction that way than to just post on the YouTubes. That is a lot harder. I promise you that is a lot harder. So if you have a community you're in, and it does have to be authentic, right? You can't, people are smart. Like people are smart. People can tell very quickly when you're inauthentic or like clout chasing and they'll call you out for it and it'll be a mess. It won't be worth the time. But if you're in a community in an authentic way, you can make content for it. You can grow within that community. And then after doing that, expand that to something else. Variety. So what's particularly difficult for my situation is that the only thing that really, or the thing that immediately comes to mind is like the League of Legends community. And I feel like content for that has already been pretty saturated. I mean, that's maybe a bad mentality because originality, you know, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that not all the content's been done. But the way I see it, uh, a lot of the content creators that I watch have been either like really skilled or has, as he said, like really funny, like Moon Moon. Well, he was really skilled too. He was playing high elo Overwatch. Um, but if you're not funny and you're not good, you sort of have to be creative with it. And I just feel like the, with the longevity of League of Legends, it's going to be, if I decide to pursue that route, and I'm still, you know, wrapping my head around everything, um, that would be a community that I would have to delve into, but a lot of it's already been done before, so... We'll have to get back to the drawing board with that, but that's just my gut reaction to what he was saying there. He's he's really smart, by the way. I, I, I do like this presentation a lot. ID streaming, whatever it is. You know what I mean? A lot of people you like blew up parts of smaller communities. Moon Moon's name is Moon Moon Overwatch. XQC Overwatch. Without that Overwatch community, they don't that's what I'm saying. where they are today. Thank you. Right? They that was exactly that community it. As a foothold. Me, with Smash. Minecraft speedrunning. Sure, it's a larger community, but still, without that speedrunning community, I, I don't know if Dream makes it where he makes it today. He didn't know how to be that good at the game. Maybe he doesn't. I don't think he does. So you just have to think of it as outside traction, not just being posting on these outside sites, but trying to find smaller communities or being part of them in authentic ways, offering value, making videos, being a part of it, and growing within there, and then maybe you can grow on, let's just call it mainstream. And finally, the last way to grow are big events. Okay? Big events. If you do something big, if you hype it up enough, if you open a first edition base set box and you let people know, I mean, obviously you have to do some marketing, it'll blow up. Maybe not on the stream, but on YouTube it will. If you post a YouTube video of you opening a first edition box of Pokemon cards for $400,000 and then burn the cards after, if that's your YouTube video, which is fair enough, your money, it will blow up. It will. That's just a fact. Really good content comes above all else. And I think Mr. Beast is a big believer in that. And it's true. And you can think of every video he does as a big event. And the same thing can happen on stream. It just requires a little bit more marketing. And maybe this is something more valuable for someone with like 50, 100 viewers. You can hype things up. But uh, I've done a bunch of big events. You know, Pokemon Week. Pokemon Week, we hyped that up for a while. 
Long time. I set all that up. I reached out to all the streamers. I hooked them up with all the boxes. I set up the days for it. I made the marketing. I made the YouTube videos for it. And I hit 100,000 viewers on Twitch. I have never been close to that milestone before. That's that. My awesome. My was like 60,000. That's really smart. 40,000 without. And I over doubled it because I did a big event. Big events will help you grow. I know you got to focus on the day-to-day, -day, but you can't get lost in the day-to-day -day and not do these large events. You got to spice things up. You got to make sure that you're always innovating, trying to do big things. So big events are important. Hosts and raids are fickle, and I don't want you to think of them as growth mechanisms because they rarely, if ever, are. And uh, I think people overvalue them in a major, major way. So now we know how to grow. We know that you want to stream, why you want to stream, what your goals are for stream, how to stream. Now we have to think of ideas that work for you. I'm giving you examples of my life of Mr. Beast of Small Ant, but maybe those don't work for you. And a lot of ideas that we do won't work for you. It's just a fact that you will not likely, and maybe I'm wrong, have a relationship with Technoblade to stream with him. That is probably just the case. You probably just won't be able to do that. You probably don't have $30,000 to spend on Pokemon cards or whatever big Mr. Beast cost thing he does. You probably don't. But True. You can spend that time thinking of ideas that do work for you. And I cannot tell you how many times I look in my DMs and I see someone who thinks of an idea that would work if they only had X money, X number of viewers, 5K viewers, if they were friends with me, if they were friends with Corpse, whatever. And that's fine. That's great. Wow, great idea. Hopefully you get there to do it. But you're not there. So why are you wasting your time thinking of videos, streams that you will never be able to do? That is a waste of time. That is fantasy. That is not strategy. Think of things that work for you. And there are things that exist. I made money by donating to streamers. This is one of my favorite YouTube videos. I thought of this idea where I would donate to streamers, have them go to a website where I made merch, and then see if I could get merch sales. I thought of this idea. I immediately went to record it. It took me two hours, top to bottom. I finished it. It was edited. It was uploaded like a couple days later. And it has almost a million views on YouTube. It's one of my favorite videos. You know how much it cost me? $48. That is it. $48 in two hours. And it has almost a million views. Anybody could have done this video. It's $48, but that's less than the price of a video game. I'm sure that if you just saved up, if you're tight for money, you could have made it happen too. Or done it for even less if you really want it. This video is one of my proudest videos. And I know it's not a stream necessarily, but this still does bring up the issue that you need to solve of thinking of ideas that you can do. Does that make sense? There's a lot of videos that you can do. So when you're thinking of your three to five streamers, all right, don't look at what you can't do from their discography. Look at what you can do. If you look at what you can't do, you're never going to be able to make content for yourself. You'll only be thinking of content for other people, which is a waste of time. It's a total waste of time. That's just as bad as me imagining what I would do if I was in the Super Bowl and I was in Tom Brady's shoes. I'd throw a Hail Mary. That's what I would do. Tom, you should do that. Doesn't make any goddamn sense. I'm not going to be in the Super Bowl. Next, 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 next. We've thought of ideas that work for you, how to do them, but what do you stream? This is a very basic question that people always ask. It's maybe, maybe the number one question. What do you stream, Ludwig? Okay, good question. What do you stream? Sure. Okay, let's talk about it. I first and foremost think this question is probably talked about too much because as long as you are doing everything in the streams like recordings section, then what you stream isn't as important you know what i mean because you can really make anything work there is one thing that i've done that will always work it's tried and true this is the number one thing you need to stream to make it big the yoink and twist baby what everybody else is doing that's right yes yes you do not have to rewrite the entire playbook we do not need a new new testament we're good jesus got it down the first time Yoink and twist. Look, I'm not saying to carbon copy because people notice, people will make fun of you. You can't just do it one to one because honestly, you won't do it as good most of the time anyway. You can yoink and twist. So I saw, here's one example. This video Soda Poppin did a few years ago. When Stream goes shopping for $1,000, you know what he would do in this, in this video? He's good. There's a stream. Ludwig's, he made a Ludwig's really good. Have people send him links and he would click on them and he would either buy them or not buy them. It was totally his decision. He was like, oh, this is funny, I'll buy it. Or, oh, this isn't funny, I'm not going to buy it. That was it. And I was like, that's interesting. But what if I did that and I had chat vote? 
that might be kind of funnier if chat is the one who votes. That way I literally have no say. It adds a little bit more stakes. It gets chat a little bit more involved and it uh, allows for like, I think a little bit cooler of uh, an experience. Then I saw this Mr. Beast video. I gave my credit card to random people. And I thought, huh, well, I'm doing this Amazon stream, but in reality, what I'm doing is since I'm letting them vote, I'm kind of just giving my credit card to stream. So I saw this thumbnail. I kind of made my own version for my content that was originally based off a video I saw Soda Pop and make. And so you add both of those together and you get, I gave my credit card to stream. And that's it. And that's it. And that's the total entire idea of how I came up with this video. And the video did pretty well for me. 557,000 views is well above average. That's a good amount of views for me. Uh, it certainly didn't beat the originals, which is why you can't be a carbon copy anyway, because you do cap yourself at a ceiling. So you have to pull from a lot of people. And this is fine to do. Like, maybe it feels scummy or bad, but I promise you that there is very little to no originality in streaming or YouTube. Mizkif is swapping his unbanned forms with Maya today. Wow, that's a really good idea, Mizkif. I like it a lot. Let's just go ahead and take a look at a video I made a couple of days ago. Oh, I swapped streams <laughs> with Cutie Cinderella. Oh, interesting. Oh, it was unbanned forms. I don't really know huh, interesting. That's fine. I don't have any claim over it, all right? But at the end of the day, if you are the first to it, you will probably be more successful. If they don't add their own twist, they are capped to what they pulled from. That's just how it works. You have to add your own twist or else you have a ceiling. All right, let's give you another example. Point Crow Wikipedia race. Point Crow totally yoinked this for me as well. Wikipedia race runs are insane. It's a direct one-to-one -one yoink. It doesn't feel like there's anything really new to it, but he's capped because my video got 1.6 mil. He's half of that. He probably will not beat the number of views I got. He needs to add a twist unless he wants to be stuck at that ceiling. You got to add your twist. You laugh, you lose. I've done a lot of you laugh, you loses. That's not new. I have a ceiling of other people who've done you laugh, you loses. You laugh, but the video ends. There's the twist. That video has over a million views. I was the first person I know of to do that. Now it's been yoinked several times and uh, actually I've stopped doing it and it's been yoinked so much that it's not even considered my idea anymore. But regardless, the point is you need to yoink, but you need to twist. This is why we brought up the three to five creators. Who did you write down? Look right now who you wrote down. Who are the three to five that you want to end with? Those are the people yeah. first and foremost Super. that you're going to want to look from. Mm. You want to see what they've done that maybe you could yoink. Fuck. So, he kind of already went into this. Clint Stevens just has this thing about him that, like, everyone loves him. And he's probably more the exception than the rule that Ludwig's talking about. Because I think he streamed maybe three times this year, in 2021. But I also don't think that he's going to dip in popularity. Like he... Like another streamer may, maybe would. I, I, I don't know. Um... And I think Daph is just like personality wise, like original, very like constant. I, I don't know how to describe it. I'm mean, gonna have to think about this more. Um, Super is just kind of, he's good at Overwatch. What does he do differently? I mean, the thing I'm thinking about now is like, what do I like about these people? And I think it's their confidence. But that's not necessarily like entirely what would make them appealing right it's confidence isn't just a color right it can come with an originality and a brand and so you know i have to think about this a lot more but uh just from the yoink and twist thing i'm not a confident person like i think these guys are um i'm not but <laughs> You know, an outlier like Clint Stevens, and I don't think I'm like Moon Moon whatsoever, uh, or as funny as he is. So, in terms of the yoink and twist, I mean, I guess technically, if it were that easy to come up with it, someone else would have done it already. But that's just where my mind goes immediately after watching this part of it. Could you yoink and twist this? Is that possible to do? Who'd you write down? Think about it. It's fine. You don't have to come up with it all right now, but it's a good base to start. Because at the end of the day, very simply, this is how streaming and more importantly, YouTube work. You do things, throw shit at a wall. One day, shit hits, sticks, stays. And you have to keep doing that thing. You have to keep pumping out that shit while also having R&D for new shit to be thrown and eventually stick as well. 
and you can think of every creator you like. They've all gone through this same formula. Do you like Dream? Okay, Minecraft Manhunt. He one day decided to do it, threw shit at a wall, it stuck. Now, he always does Minecraft Manhunts. He keeps doing that. He also has to throw in new things, because maybe Minecraft Manhunt will one day get old, and so you need to make sure that you're doing new things, that way your viewership continues to grow. But, the main idea is when you do something that works, you keep doing it, all right? Which brings me to a quote. This is the most important quote and the most helpful quote I have ever come across for streaming or YouTube. I think about it almost every day. At a certain point, growth becomes more about consistency than creativity. That's from Reckful. Now, I'm not trying to farm Sages, but this genuinely has been one of the most helpful things anyone's ever said, and it is so true. When you do something that works, you keep doing it. You don't have to come up with new ideas. That's exhausting, it's tiring, it'll take too much time, it won't be worth the effort. So, I like this quote a lot, and that's particularly because one of the things that I think an industry like this, and even like, for example, if you were an artist, um, it's the scariest to me is what if you just run out of that creativity or you run out of that drive, right? Like, how do you know that tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to have good ideas, right? At least if you have like a nine to five, like project manager job, like I had, um, what's particularly easy is that, you know, you have a workflow, you know what you have to do, you know what steps need to be taken. And yes, there are minor adjustments that you need to take per project, but overall, you're not like, you're not reinventing the wheel. What was scary about or daunting to me, and I'm not obviously successful at it yet, but what the most daunting thing to me about content creation here in like the streamer world is that like, yes, new games come out, but if you want to continue to grow, right? Uh, and I'm interested to see what he has to say about this. Um, how do you know that you're going to continue to be creative? And that's just something I've always struggled with, but I'm really interested in hearing more about. It's not as much of a creative endeavor as, uh, you know, Poetry. Yeah, you do express some creativity. There you go. If you want to make it big, it is not just about that. Summoning Salt. All of his videos, he one day decided to do a uh, history of speedruns, popped off. Now that's all he does. Maybe one day he was like, oh, I'm going to make many different YouTube videos. No, that's not what he does anymore. He does what works. And sometimes it can be a little scary because you might pigeonhole yourself into only the one thing that's worked. So you do need to have a balance. You need to make sure that even though you're doing the same old things, you're also doing new things. I think sometimes I actually don't do enough recycling content as much of a meme as it is. I don't think I've done enough You Laugh, You Loses. I don't think I played enough Among Us at the start, to be totally honest with you. I think that I didn't do it enough. I was like, I want to do new things. And I could have grown a little bit more had I decided to either stick with Among Us early on or stick with You Laugh, You Loses. Instead, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do new endeavors. And that probably made me grow a little slower. So I have to think about that. I think I have to think about that all the time. You got to think about that as well. Uh, and every creator you look at, look through the YouTube channel. They've probably done something that you really like a lot of times in the past, and they'll do it a lot of times again in the future. Because viewers only like what they know. How is a viewer supposed to like something you haven't done yet? If anything, they're apprehensive to it. They'll probably want you to do the thing that they liked because they know that they like that rather than you bringing new thing to them and then being like, well, I don't know if I like this thing and I like this thing, so let's just make sure we do this thing. AKA my chat spamming for me to play monkey ball. That is the same scenario. Maybe I can play monkey ball. Maybe I can cop another 500K on YouTube. That is consistency over creativity. And there are lines where you have to draw in the sand where you're like, I don't want to keep doing this. I'm tired of this. And that's fine, but just keep this quote in mind. And that brings us to our final slide. If you want to make it big on Twitch, you want to be a bigger streamer than me, you're just starting out, you simply have to be better. You have to be a better streamer than I am. You cannot even be as good as me. That will not be enough. Unfortunately, the rich get richer. The big channels get more viewers. I'm at the top of all categories I stream on. My YouTube videos get recommended more than you. So whatever you're doing, it cannot just be what I'm doing. You need to do it better than me if you hope to get bigger than me. That's the plain, simple truth. And it's not easy advice, and it's very hard to do, and it'll take years, but it is the actual fact of the matter. There's no growth mechanism that for makes small sense. streamers that will let you leapfrog me in views. So you got to do it the good old-fashioned way by just simply being a better streamer. If you use all these tips, you'll get close. You won't get past me because you'll be operating on the knowledge that I have. 
So you'll need to pull knowledge from other places. I'm not the end all informant on how to get big on Twitch. I'm just a guy who happened to pop off and has some things you learned along the way. There are other resources you can use. If you want the nitty gritty details, I'm not the guy for it. It's things like what mic do I use? When do I stream? What camera do I use? Do I use a camera? Well, just go to Alpha Gaming on YouTube. That's the one place I've seen. I've read it. I've read it as a small streamer. I've read it as a big streamer. I've watched it. Harris Heller knows his shit. He literally does. He's, if you ever want to know the specifics of weird streaming stuff, that's your guy. I'm not the best guy for that. No big streamer is because it's pretty basic info and probably the most given advice for people. And I think in part also the least valuable. I see you, Jared. It's important. Don't get me wrong. Your stream setup, but it's not like what defines you. For uh, every nice stream setup, there is an example of someone with no mic using a Blue Yeti or worse. Technoblade uses a fucking Blue Yeti. You know Technoblade had one monitor until last month? So, <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, it doesn't super matter, but it is somewhat important. in Alpha Gaming, that's your guy. And that's it. That's all I got for you. That is all the tips I have. That's my entire spiel. So let's do this one more time. Let's do a poll. How many of you want to be streamers knowing everything you do now do you still want to do it knowing that 6.9 million people will be at it and your chance of making it is about 0.66 percent all right well seems like you guys have stuck to your guns a little bit maybe lost a few percent of you but if you want to do it the other last final words i have for you just start if you don't start you'll never get there so you got to start. Hopefully you wrote down that start date. Get to it. The moment that day hits, do not stall. Good luck. Nice. That was a great video. That was actually, that was actually legitimately like good video. Um, oops, sorry about that. Okay. So I think if I had to summarize this, like the biggest points that stood out to me. Um, well, here, three ways to grow, right? Uh, well, I don't even think I want to start there. I think what I enjoyed the most about that is how real he was. And he said, you, like, from the beginning, right? The beginning of the video, he said, if you don't even, like, write this down physically, you shouldn't even try. Because you can't, there's not like a shortcut to do it. Um, I really liked how he mentioned how, uh, you know, people who get like 20,000 people posted to them, if they don't have a, like that bedrock of content, people like, there's no sticking power. There's no, you know, why would they stick around if they're not gonna like, it, it's great to be there for the YouTube videos and for the streamers, um, audience who was just like, hi YouTube, right? But that's kind of what brings them back to the stream, right? Because they want to be at the content when it's happening in real time. And if they want to relive it, then they go to YouTube and it just helps the community grow. Um, you need that foundation, right? Before, like to support that originality. Um, yeah, you, you've heard the term like spearheading, you know, new ideas. The spearhead is great, but if it's not supported by like the you know, well, well crafted uh, shaft, and well, then it's not gonna, you know, do what it's meant to do. I don't think that was the best analogy, but that's it made sense in my head more. Um, my biggest takeaways from this: uh, I really got to get my YouTube going again. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm already like a decently organized enough person, but I think I definitely need to introduce have like an intro to whatever activity I'm doing that day you know I have the content of course and then the conclusions like for example League uh, League is something I'm familiar with I've been playing for the past seven years if I'm gonna move forward with this sort of content it needs to be more like purposeful like if I want to play tanks today maybe it's a new build I'm trying out maybe it's I watched the tutorial at the beginning of the stream I see, I, you know, excuse me, go into the certain matchup, and then I finish up um, by saying, okay, well, this is what worked for me, this is what didn't work for me, or even it doesn't even have to be that analytical, I could just be like, okay, I'll add that to the list, but I need to be more structured around the content. 
um, YouTube. I, I don't even know if I want to do challenges. Well, and that's, I guess that'll, I'm getting to that. I don't know what I want to do yet. No, yeah, exactly. I don't want to be a Night Blue 3 clone, but um, I definitely want to have more organized uh, streams. I think that would just feel better for me, you know, like going, waking, like, it's easier for me to wake up knowing what I plan to do during the day than to wake up and be like, okay, I'll wing it. I'll just fill, you know? Um, so the idea of planning is good for me motivationally, but then also good for me, uh, like for content, it seems as well. Um, the biggest, another big thing is think of ideas that work for me and the idea of the yoink and twist. So you don't have to be completely original and do something that no one else has done, but you need to add your own spin on it. So if I were to take Night Blues 3 content with like, oh, you won't believe this build, like, or this, look at this crazy build. I don't, I don't really watch this content, so I don't know. But I guess if you wanted to do that, like side by side, like, like if there was a way for you to do like in houses and then go against someone with like a similar uh, skill level to you and then figure out how the matchup works out with your weird and wacky build versus their standard build But then even that's like really niche content because Like I'm imagining you do that in a mirror matchup. I don't know <coughs> Doing this on stream is probably not the best way to like try and format everything out in my head like what I want to do with it but It's definitely a good takeaway that Ludwig presented um yeah, I think overall my thoughts are just scattered right now. It doesn't help that I really have to pee and I just like, I drink like, like four fifths of a cup of coffee during that. But I thought that video was phenomenal. Um, definitely inspiring me to get my YouTube started again. I have stuff on there when I was really into editing, but uh, I think it's about time that there's been a, there, there should be like a, a large pivot in the stuff I work towards. Um, and stuff I continue to learn. But yeah, that was that was a fantastic video. I liked that a lot. Uh, I'm definitely gonna spend some time off stream. Let me save this. I'm definitely gonna spend some time off stream, like organizing my content more. But I have my goal for what I want to do. And um, like I said, really, really good video. <laughs> 